Hey guys, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I designed a website for a new company called The Snorkel Guide. Now I designed this website for one of my Wixfix subscribers. He watched several of my videos and managed to design this website right here. And for someone who is new to Wix, it's actually really good. But he did end up reaching out because he wanted to take it to the next level. So here is what we're gonna be creating today. Now in this tutorial, we'll be using a bunch of techniques that I've done so many times in the past. So in this video, I don't really plan to cover how I'm doing it. I'm just gonna be covering why I'm doing it. So you guys can start developing that web design headspace and apply it to your website. Now, if you are new around here, I will be putting links in the description to videos that exclusively talk about what I'm gonna be covering in this video. Now, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that we use blank websites we don't typically use templates and that's for two reasons one i feel like templates really hinder my creativity and i feel really confined to keep the template as is if i decide to add things or remove things it really just clashes with what i really want to do and i feel like i end up messing up the template secondly there are so many different wix websites out there and although some of these templates are really good Think about how many other Wix users are using that same exact template, and I prefer to have a website that looks more original. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be using a blank template. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and set up my pages. So we'll come up to menu and pages, and we'll start adding the pages that we plan to use on our website. Boom, there we go. And the next thing I like to do is come over to our theme manager right here, and go ahead and set up our colors. And before we close out this tab, we'll come over to text and we'll go ahead and set up our text themes. Okay, now that we have all of our text themes set up, we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is edit our header. Now, if you've been here for a while, you probably know I do not like keeping things in between these two lines because that'll make the website seem really squished on a larger desktop, such as this one. So what we're gonna do is add a strip. So I'll come up to here, strip, and bring it out. Next, we'll go into the settings and remove the opacity so that the color isn't there. And then we are going to set the height to this to about 110. We're gonna go into layouts and press add column. We'll click the left column, press layouts again, and align it to the left. We'll click the right column, layouts, align to the right. Then we'll just bring this up into the header. You'll see a highlight and say attach to header, and we'll just release. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and press this stretch button right here, and we're gonna go ahead and add a 60 pixel margins to both the left and the right. So as you can see on the right, we have 60 pixels right here, and on the left, we'll have 60 pixels right there as well. So now let's go ahead and add a logo, and it's just gonna be some text. There we go, and we'll go ahead and bring it into the header. We'll align it to the left. Next, I wanna go ahead and add menu hamburger icon. So we'll go to add, we'll go to decorative, and we'll do more basic shapes. Here we'll search lines. And then you can kind of choose which one you want to use for your website. For this example, I think I'm going to use this one right here. And of course, we are going to shrink this down quite a bit. And then we'll go ahead and move it up into the header, but on the right side. And then we'll press this little align button and align to the right. Now let's go ahead and do the footer. So we'll do the same thing as we did before. We'll add a strip. This one will make it dark. We'll choose layouts, add column. We'll click the left column, press layouts, align to left. Right column, layouts, align to right. Next we'll drag it down until we see move to footer pop up and we'll press that button. And now we can go ahead and add in our footer content. And let's go ahead and not forget to add our 60 pixel margins to keep the site consistent. Now let's go ahead and select the footer. We'll change the design. We'll choose this color one right here. Customize design, fill. We'll remove the center background and we will add, and we'll go ahead and add a color and we'll use this color. That way we can align all of our content up together and just stick to the left. And now let's add a menu over here to the right. And there we go, that is our footer design. We have the logo again. We have a little description about what the company is. We have the address of the company, the email. And then over here on the right, we have different links to the other pages. Now we can go ahead and begin the, the page design. So we'll go ahead and add a strip right up to the top like this. 
we'll go ahead and add our 60 pixel margins. And this is gonna be the main image on the website. In web design, this is called the hero section. So this is gonna be the first thing your users see. So we wanna make it nice and big. So we'll make this 700 pixels high, and then we'll change the strip background to an image. Now you can either upload your own images or you can come over to Unsplash or Media from Wix. These are both really high quality stock photo libraries that you can use for free. So after we find an image that we want to use, we'll go ahead and say change background. Next, we'll come over to background scroll effect and we'll select parallax. This will make it so when the user is scrolling down, the background image doesn't move as fast and looks really cool. Next, let's go ahead and add some text. So we'll go come up to add text and we'll add a heading one. Now, if you're new around here, you want to remember to only have one heading one per page um, because that tells Google what the page is about. So what we're gonna do is now change the color to white and we're gonna change the alignment to the center and then we're gonna put in our text, okay? And then what we're gonna do is come up to, a, we're gonna select our text element, we're gonna come up to a line and we're going to center it to the strip. Okay, now the hero section is finished, so we'll go ahead and add another strip below it. Okay, and then for this, I want to add a design element. So we'll come over to box, and we'll just pull out this box right here. Now I don't want this to be that tall, so we'll go ahead and shorten it up, but I do want it to be long. So we'll probably make it about 940 pixels, and we'll go ahead and center it up. Next, let's go ahead and change the design. I do not want a fill but I do want a border. And we'll make this border this dark blue right here. And we'll add a one pixel width. And maybe this border is too dark. So we'll go back into here and we'll choose a light color like that. Okay, now let's add a text element. We'll go ahead and center it up and we'll say about. And then I kind of want to change the color to a dark blue. So we'll use this one and then we're going to stick this right here. Now, as you can see, the line of the box kind of goes through it. So what we're going to do is come over to add. We'll do decorative and we'll pull out this blue square. Now we're going to shorten this up quite a bit and we're going to change the fill to the background color. And we're going to stick it right over the about. Now something I forgot to do was change the strip background or remove it. So we're going to select the strip change strip background, settings, and lower the opacity. Now this little square that we added matches the page background. Now let's go ahead and add our little text paragraph, just like that. So now let's go ahead and shorten the height of the strip to about 300 pixels. And then we'll go ahead and grab everything in the strip. And we'll make sure it's centered. So we'll drag it up and you're gonna see it connect to the center. And we're all set. Great, so now we're gonna go ahead and add a section that's gonna to link to our other pages. So let's go ahead and press add, strip. We're gonna go ahead and make this one 500 pixels. We're gonna go ahead and change the background opacity to zero. We're gonna come over to layouts and press add column. Then we're gonna do manage column and add a third column. Next, we're gonna click layouts again. We're gonna add 30 pixels of column spacing. So it kind of separates them. Then we're gonna come over to stretched and add our 60 pixel margins. Now let's click on the left column and add an image. Then we'll come into settings change the background color to this dark blue. And we will lower the opacity to about seven. And we'll do that for each of these. Okay, now that we have our images in, now we're gonna add something called hover boxes. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add another box to this column. Now we're gonna align this to the left and the bottom. I'm gonna shrink this down quite a bit to be about like this size. Now we're gonna change the design opacity to 0%. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a text element. We'll bring it into the box and we'll change the name. And we will make this our light color. Next, we're also gonna align this to the left and bottom. And then we're gonna use our shift and arrow keys to bump this up two times and then right two times. Now select the container box and select hover interactions and we'll press get started. Okay, now let's select our text element and bump it up a little bit like that. And now let's go over to add to hover and we'll do a button. Now let's change the text to learn more. 
and now we'll edit the design. So fill, we're gonna remove the fill completely and we're gonna add a one pixel border. Now let's select hover and we'll change the fill to our light color and we'll change the text to our dark color, okay? Now if we preview the website and we hover over, you're gonna see the text goes up and a learn more button pops up. Now, if you wanna learn more about hover boxes and what they are and what you can do with them, I do have a video in the description below. So pause the video, go check it out and then come back. Now I want to link this button to the proper page. So we'll click the button, press link, choose page, and this is for top lists. Now we'll click out of the hover box and we will click the hover box and press copy and paste. Now we'll bring this one over to this column right over here. And we will align it to the left and center. And something I forgot to do is click the column, change layouts and align it to the left. And I need to do that for this one as well. So then we will copy and paste this again. We'll drag it over to the third option and just connect it to the bottom left. Now let's change the names. So this one will be reviews and this one's gonna be education. Now let's go into our hovers and make sure that these are linked to the proper pages. So the next section is gonna be a repeater, which is something you can't put into a strip. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add a strip just below it. I'm only gonna make this one 80 pixels. I'm gonna remove the background. And this is just gonna be a separator for us. So let's go ahead and press add. We'll come over to listing grid and we'll pull out this one. And we'll go ahead and move it down and we'll move it right underneath that strip that we just created right here. Next, let's go ahead and press stretched and we'll stretch it to the full width and we'll add 60 pixel margins. So the next thing I want to do is select the repeater, not one of the container items, but the actual repeater. And we're gonna press layouts and add 30 pixel spacing in between our items. Now we'll select one of the items and we'll make the height 500. And we are going to stretch the width right until it hits our line, just like that. So I stretched the width until it hit our margin, just like that. So now it's stretched to the full width and matches the alignment with the rest of our content. Okay, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just erase everything in here. I'm gonna go ahead and press manage items and we're gonna remove all but two. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the background. This part really isn't all that necessary, but this is still something I prefer to do just for good practice. So you can actually get a, a feel for your site in the editor. And what this section is gonna be for is your recent blog posts. So in order to do that, we actually need to add a blog. So we're gonna come over to the left and press start blogging. And we're gonna add a blog. Now a little box is gonna pop up and ask if you just want a normal blog or if you want a blog where your users can create an account and comment and do all that kind of stuff. So if you want them to interact with you, then you can select blog plus members area or you can just do a normal blog. For this example, we'll just do a normal blog. Then it's gonna take us to the blog page it just created. However, if we come over to pages, go to site menu, you're gonna see it's gonna create a blog page for us. What we're gonna do is just press this three dot icon and press hide. So we'll go back to our home page and we'll scroll down to our blog section right here. And then we can go ahead and set up our content for our blog. So what we're gonna do is come over to add we're gonna add a box and we'll align it to the bottom left. Now we're gonna shrink this up quite a bit and we want this to be about 430 by 240, perfect. Next, let's go ahead and add a heading. We'll do heading two. Now, as you can see, whenever I'm adding something to a repeater, it's adding it to the second container as well. That's why these things are so cool. You can add as many elements, you can design one and it'll affect all of the other elements. So what this one is gonna be is blog title. And now we're gonna go ahead and add a button and we'll make the text learn more. And we'll go ahead and edit the design to be similar to our other button. But instead of it being white, we're gonna make it a dark blue. And we'll come over to hover and we'll add the fill to be this dark blue. And we'll make the text light. Now if we press preview, you're gonna see that it's just gonna show what we designed. Our blog posts are not populating in here quite yet. So let's go ahead and set that up. What we're gonna do is come over to add. We're gonna come up down to content manager and we're gonna press add to site. This little box is gonna pop up and we're just gonna press blank. And I'm just gonna name this delete and press create. 
now. And it's just going to populate a content management. And it's just going to create like this thing for us, but we really don't need this one. So after you created that one, you're going to see it right here, but you can just delete it by coming over to this three dot icon and pressing remove collection. Um, because all you really need is this post one right here that comes with the blog. So we'll do add content elements database. All right. And it's going to pop out this little thing right here. Now this is invisible when the site is live. This is only visible in the editor. So you don't have to worry about trying to hide this or, deleting it or anything like that because this is not actually going to be visible on the actual site. So we'll come over to settings. We're going to choose the post collection and then we're going to say read only and we're going to set the number of items to display to only two. So it's only going to show the, the most two recent blog posts. So it's only going to fill up two. If you left this at 12 and you have 12 blog posts, it's going to make your page super long because it's literally going to show all of your blog posts. Now what we can do is select the background image and we'll press this connect to data. It's going to ask you which data you want to connect with. So we want to do post data set, which is this right here. And then the item background is going to connect to the cover image. Next, let's go into the heading. We'll do connect to data. And we'll connect this to the title and then the button we're going to connect to the post page url so now when the user comes in and clicks the button it's going to take them to the blog post so now when we preview you're going to see that it's going to showcase wix's default blog post these are the blog posts that automatically generate when you first add the blog to your website to teach you how to use the blog um, so as you can see here, this is going to be the title. This is going to be the image that automatically populated with that blog post. And then if we press learn more, it's going to take us to that blog post page. Next, I want to grab this strip right here and I'm going to press copy and paste. And I'm going to bring this down and I'll put it right under the repeater. Okay. The next section is going to be our newsletter. So what we're going to do is add a strip and just like before, we're going to remove the background. We are going to give it 60 pixel margins. And then for this one, we're actually going to add a column. So this left side, we're going to add an image. And on the left side, we're going to add a box, just like we had before with the outline. And we're going to drag it over to this column. We'll make sure it fits in between those two lines. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this box and this text. I'm going to copy them. And down here, I'm going to press paste. I'm going to line this up just like that. And then here, and then this one we're going to call snorkel guide newsletter. And then we will go ahead and stretch the width for this and center it up. Now we just need to add the email box form. So we'll come down to contact and forms, subscribe, and we'll drag out this one right here. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and shorten these up to be about 45 pixels tall. And then let's go ahead and edit the design. We'll just click the main subscriber form box and press design. Form background, we're going to change the opacity to zero. For the input field, which is where they would actually type in their email, we're going to go to fill and we're going to make it this gray right here. For the border, we're going to remove the border. For the text, we're going to make it black and then we're going to make it our, our font. Okay, for the submit button, we are going to make the fill this dark blue right here and then don't forget to check the hover interactions as well because those are oftentimes overlooked so what we're going to do is change the color for the border to this dark blue and this little text i guess this icon to this dark blue and then let's go ahead and go back into the input and check the hover for this as well we'll make this the dark blue focus we'll make it the same thing and then for air, we'll make it maybe something like that. So what air is, is maybe they don't type in a valid email and they click off that, they click off this input field and it'll give them an error saying, Hey, you need to fix this before you can submit. So next let's go ahead and change this text element to railway light. Perfect. And then we'll make this, this color as well. Now let's go ahead and add a text element right here to kind of give the users an idea of what they're actually signing up for. The last thing I want to do for this page is we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this one more time. 
and we'll bring it down to right here and we'll drag it up. So this is gonna be our website for desktop. Okay, now the users need a way to navigate the pages. So we added this little hamburger icon. So now we need to make it work. So what we're gonna do is come over to add. We'll do interactive. We'll choose subscribe and we'll do the subscribe bar. I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything that's currently in here. I'm gonna select the background, choose the design. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press design. We'll choose an image, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and change the background color to a really dark blue. And we're gonna lower the opacity to where you can barely see the image. Now let's go ahead and add a menu. So we'll come down to add menu. We'll do a vertical menu. And we'll just drag out this first one. We'll press design, text. And we'll change the color to this light color right here. And then the font we're gonna change to our, we'll do like a bolder font for this. And let's raise the font size to about 22. Hover, we're gonna make it this color right here. And then click, so we're gonna make it that color as well. Next, let's just go ahead and click the menu and align it to the center. Now, if we look at this little X up here, it has a little bit of a green border to match the default color of this little slide out menu. So we're gonna come into design and we're gonna customize design and remove the border. Next, let's click the light box and set trigger. We're gonna name this to menu. We're gonna say automatically display light box to no, and then we're gonna exit out. Now, let's go ahead and click this little hamburger icon. And we're gonna link it to a light box and just make sure it's set to menu. Now, if we preview the site and press this little hamburger icon, the menu is gonna show up. All right, and that's basically the design for the desktop. Now let's go ahead and do the mobile. So we'll switch over to mobile, and this is what we're gonna see. Not too pretty. So I think I'm gonna use Wix's menu for mobile. So we'll go ahead and hide this element right here. We'll drag up Wix's menu up into the main header and we'll hide this column. And then we will drag up this header to the recommended height. Now the hero section for mobile, I'm gonna set it to about 200 pixels high. I'm gonna get the about section out the way. And then I'm going to center this up. I'm also going to lower the size to about 16 pixels. Now you can barely read it on here, and that's because I forgot to set a background color to this, so we'll do change background settings. We'll add the background color, and we'll lower this to about 70. Now I'll switch back over to mobile, and we'll be able to read it a little bit better. Now let's do the about section. We're going to set it up the same exact way as we did on desktop. For this section, I'm gonna have it be about 180 pixels tall. And I'm gonna bring this down. So what I'm gonna do is actually have this container box be about 120 pixels tall. I'm gonna center the text up in it. Then I need to find our little box that I just had. Where did it go? There it is. We'll drag it above. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And then we'll bring the about text right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and lower the height just like that and I'm going to delete the space. I'll do the same here. Okay now this section is where we're going to be linking to other pages and as you can see here we actually don't have the button. So as fun as hover boxes are for desktop, hover interactions do not work on mobile. So you're not going to see the button here since the button only showed on desktop when you hovered. So what we need to do is come over to hidden elements and we need to do these buttons just like that. Now, if we go back up to the top, we're gonna to see our buttons here. So now we need to design this section. So, we'll, we'll, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is make sure that everything is set up. So I'm gonna make sure the buttons are about 13 pixels font size. And then I'm gonna change the width to about 135. I'm gonna move this to the right. Next, I want this text to be about 30 pixels, so I'm gonna go into settings and do font size 30. And I'm gonna shorten this text element to be about there, so it won't overlap with the button, and I'm gonna move it down to be in alignment with the button. Okay, next I'm gonna select the actual column, about 200 pixels in height, 
and then I'm gonna move this box down to the bottom and I'm gonna use the arrow keys to nudge it up two times. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of these. Okay, now that I have made the design consistent, I, I kinda wanna add spacing in between here just like I did for the desktop. So what we're gonna do is select it, press layouts, then we're gonna add column spacing to about 30. Uh, that's too much for desktop, so or that's too much for mobile, so we'll just do 10 pixels. Okay, now we have our spacing strip here, and we'll make this, uh, let's say like 40 pixels, and then we'll delete the space, just like that. And this is our blog section. So I'm gonna have this section be about 325 pixels high. Next, I'm gonna grab this box and align it to the bottom left. Next, I want this heading size to be about 22 pixels. We are gonna shrink it to be about this size. And I'm gonna pull it up to the top left and then use my shift arrow keys to nudge it over to where I want it to be. And then the same design that we used for these buttons up here, we're gonna to apply to this one. And we will align it to the rest of the site just like that. Okay, now I want this section to be about Let's say a 290 in width and about 125 in height, just like that. And then we will lower the button to be about right there. And since this is the repeater, it should automatically do it for this one as well. Then we're gonna click in between the repeater items and press layouts. And we're gonna set spacing in between items to 10. And then here is another spacing strip. So what we're gonna do is make this one 40 pixels. Now here is our subscriber form and I kind of want the image to be on top so we'll, we'll click the side of the strip manage columns and we will lower this one to the bottom now for this column I want it to be about 200 pixels so we'll put in 200 and then here we just kind of need to edit this to look nice just like the about section up here okay now this section is done we'll go ahead and delete the space and honestly we don't really need this strip here so we'll do it. We'll go ahead and press hide element. And then this is going to be our footer right here. I didn't even have to edit this one. Normally you will see other stuff here, um, but I think I kind of like this design. All we really have to do is delete this column. So we'll press hide element and then we'll raise this one up just a little bit. And that basically wraps it up for the video. If you found this video useful, please press that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you all in the next one.